Avalanche experts describe the power and scope of yesterday's historic natural slides. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. First, breaking news from Breckenridge, where an inbounds avalanche released on expert terrain off the Imperial Chair in the Whale's Tail area. The resort confirms no one was caught or injured in that slide. It was reported around 12.25 p.m., and the area cleared by ski patrol with a probe line by 2. The snow at Keystone today left Powderhounds almost speechless. Amazing, deep. That was Ty riding Santiago Express this morning. On the River Run gondola was Eric skiing with an old college friend. My buddy flew all the way from Chicago just for the powder. Sea Rock's own Fox was on day two at Keystone and could hardly believe conditions at her backyard resort. I almost get lost at Keystone at my home resort. Things are covered in a different way I've never seen before. It's totally a winter wonderland. Breckenridge got 30 inches in 48 hours from this latest storm for 331 inches this season. That's nearly 100 more than all of last season, while Keystone got 22 inches for 226 inches so far. And it ain't over yet. Forecasters predict another 4 to 10 inches by tomorrow morning. It's official. March 7th was one for the record books. This might be a once-in-a-lifetime type of avalanche cycle. That was Brian Lazar with the CAIC. Summit was rocked by at least six natural slides Thursday and a dozen triggered by CDOT. He and his colleagues have never seen local conditions like this. A perfect storm of layer cake snowpack and heavy snowfall. That provides a really rapid and heavy load to a snowpack that has some fragile weak layers. Lazar says a slide like the one that tore a new path on Peak 1 releases thousands of metric tons of snow, equal to a U.S. Navy battleship. It shed the entire season's snowpack, traveling at freeway speeds. Avalanches that are big enough to, you know, knock a train off the tracks and destroy wood frame structures, take out four acres of forest, you know, things like we saw in Peak 1. What are your chances of surviving a slide right now? You are unlikely to survive, period. These are monsters. Lazar warns we're in the middle of a dangerous avalanche cycle and does not recommend backcountry travel this weekend, even if the area already slid. Wait to the spring. The carnage will all still be there. We'll wait for avalanche conditions to uh, calm themselves quite a bit. Check the CAIC website or app for the latest on changing conditions. No one has died this week in local avalanches, but yesterday a man was killed by a slide on Jones Pass in Clear Creek County. The Colorado Sun reports 48-year-old Hans Berg of Empire was caught and buried while guiding with a snowcat tour company. He died at the hospital from injuries sustained in the slide. He is the seventh avalanche death of the season, one more than the Colorado average, and 20th skier death overall. Big things are coming to Copper Mountain, like a chairlift to Tucker Mountain and a new lodge at Solitude Station. Taylor Prather with the resort. So if you're familiar with Tucker Mountain, it's high alpine terrain, expert steeps and shoots and gladed terrain. The lift and lodge are part of a $100 million upgrade, including the new American Flyer and American Eagle chairs. We're going to put in a 25,000 square foot facility, poured the foundation for that actually while we were constructing the Eagle last season. And it's going to take another couple of summers to put some walls up. The Tucker Mountain lift should open next season. The lodge opens in 2021. Two years ago today, Catherine Jeter came inches from never skiing again. The injuries were really more consistent with stepping on an IED than they were of a ski accident. The 78-year-old from South Carolina was hit from behind by a 240-pound snowboarder, breaking her legs. I could feel the bones breaking as I tumbled down the, the slope. Doctors said recovery could take years, but Jeter had other plans. She got out last season and has 10 days already this season. I came back this year and skied for two weeks and really skied well, I might add. The incident inspired Jeter to launch the Alliance for Skier and Rider Responsibility. Like dozens at a meeting in January, she believes crowded slopes and a lack of education or data lead to devastating ski accidents. We don't have any data. Do you perceive skiing to be more dangerous than it used to be? People say, well, yes, it is, but nobody has the measuring stick. Jeter knows she's fighting an uphill battle, but also knows it's worth it. We are not adversarial. We do not have an axe to grind. We just want to see safer slopes for our children, our grandchildren, and certainly for ourselves. To learn more about the Alliance for Skier and Rider Responsibility and their mission, see safeslopesus.com. In sports, the Nuggets play the Warriors tonight. Tip-off is 8.30 on ESPN. And in local sports, brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Weiss Agency, it's opening day of spring sports season for Summit High. Boys lacrosse plays Green Mountain in Lakewood today, and Tigers baseball is in Canyon City tomorrow. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.